Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Soap Queen TV, where I'm going to show you how to make this bright and cheery lemon poppy cold process soap. It features a beautiful yellow and white design with poppy seeds for contrast and a wonderful mica vein. This was originally featured on the SoapQueen.com blog and it was our number one tutorial for all of 2014. So I'm so excited to show it to you here. If you've never made cold process soap before, this is a more advanced technique and I recommend that you stop right now and you go back and review the first four episodes of Cold Process Basics on Soap Queen TV. Or review my chapter in Soap Crafting on how to use lye safely. I'm using fizzy lemonade colorant to create an eye-catching yellow and titanium dioxide to really make a white color that allows the poppy seeds to stand out. For the mica line, I'm using Luster Black Mica from Brambleberry.com. Micas are smaller and finer grained than many colorants, making them a perfect option to make a mica vein. The soap is fragrance with a blend of lemon verbena, Yankee Candle type, and champagne fragrance oil to create an effervescent, happy fragrance. The lemon verbena does accelerate trace just a little, but you'll see how we use it to our advantage for this recipe. Let's start by dispersing our colorants to make sure there's no colorant clumps on our final soap. Add two tablespoons of a lightweight oil, I'm using sweet almond oil, into a container, and then mix it with two teaspoons of titanium dioxide. I'm using a mini mixer to make sure that these colorants get mixed in thoroughly. Saturate your color with the oil before turning on your mini mixer or else you'll have a big poof of colorant everywhere. First, your fizzy lemonade yellow color, do one tablespoon of lightweight oil to one teaspoon of fizzy lemonade colorant. Fully saturate the color with the liquid oil and then turn on your mini mixer. Make sure there's no clumps. I also have a Soap Queen TV short on how to mix colorants, so for more information on properly mixing colorants, watch that short. Portion out your mixture of fragrance oils, one ounce of champagne fragrance oil to half an ounce of the lemon verbena fragrance oil. Use only glass to store this in. If you use plastic or anything else, the fragrance oil can actually eat away at the plastic, leaving you with quite a mess. And now it's time to suit up for safety. Of course, I'm soaping in a well-ventilated area. There are no children or pets around. And I'm going to be putting on my goggles next. Always protect your eyes. My lye water and my oils are about 120 degrees each, which is a perfect temperature to soap this recipe at. But first, this is a totally optional step, but I'm gonna be using sodium lactate to help harden my recipe. Because we're using a silicone mold, the soap takes a few days longer to release from the mold, and the sodium lactate helps to harden the soap. The usage rate for sodium lactate is one teaspoon per pound of soap. So for this recipe, we're going to be adding three teaspoons of sodium lactate to our lye water. Add carefully and stir in. Carefully mix the lye water and the oils together by pouring the lye water down the shaft of the stick blender to help reduce bubbles. Burp your stick blender to make sure there are no bubbles caught underneath the head of the stick blender. Once the stick blender is fully submerged in your lye water and your oil mixture, turn it on and pulse it in short bursts. Once the soap has reached emulsification or light trace, separate off three cups of the soap into another container. Add all of the fizzy lemonade colorant into this container. Add half of the fragrance and mix. I'd like to get this first layer just a little bit thicker to make sure it will support that second layer, so I'm just going to stick blend another 10 to 15 seconds maximum. Pour the soap into the mold, and then use the mold to tap lightly to get rid of any air bubbles and make sure it's nice and even. 
Now this is the part that can get just a little bit messy because we're going to make our mica vein. Take a teaspoon and put some of that mica into this beautiful little powder duster from brambleberry.com. Now shake it very gently over the soap. Make sure that when you're putting this mica layer down that it's not too thick or else your layers won't adhere. And now, this is the fun part. Close your eyes, pull your hair back if it's not back already, and blow. Just blow gently. You want that mica to kind of get everywhere. And it looks like I'm a little light in air, couple areas, so there we go, and there we go. Another blow, here we go. Beautiful. Just to make sure this soap doesn't harden up before I'm ready to get to it, I'm just gonna give it a quick stir with the whisk to keep it nice and fluid. All right, good to go. Now let's work on that top layer. Put all of your titanium dioxide in it and hand stir that in. Use the rest of the fragrance blend and use a whisk to fully incorporate it. Add one tablespoon of poppy seeds and mm, doesn't that look beautiful? I love how the poppy seeds are standing out so wonderfully against that white background. How thick is this? Now, this needs a little bit more thickness because I would like to get a nice, really kind of peaked top. So this needs to be a little thicker for that kind of top. I think the consistency of icing is actually perfect. So I'm just gonna keep doing with a whisk. I'm afraid if I turn a stick blender on that I might pulverize my poppy seeds. Mmm, this is nice. This consistency is getting perfect. See how the peaks are kind of standing up? We're at a great trace. So now I'm gonna check that first base layer to make sure it will support the second layer. Kind of tap it in. It looks great. It's nice and hard. Slowly and gently pour this beautiful poppy seed layer over that first yellow layer. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Such a wonderful texture. Wow, I can really see I'm gonna be able to get some great peaks. Take your spoon and then just kind of start playing around, like what kind of design can you get? Use different tools to get different looks. I am definitely loving how this is turning out though. It just reminds me of like a lemon meringue pie or something, beautiful. And now that it's done, take 99% rubbing alcohol and give it a finishing spritz to make sure to prevent soda ash. Put the soap aside, let it sit on its own for three to four days before trying to unmold. I made this soap ahead of time so I could show you a special trick with cutting. To release it, pull gently on the sides of the soap. Now, once the mold looks like it's releasing its airlock, turn it over on its side. Don't turn it all the way over because we don't want to hurt that pretty top. And push gently out, and there we go, on its side. Now, here's the trick for cutting the soap perfectly. Use a sharp, non-serrated knife Place it carefully and then push down. Ah, what a gorgeous bar of soap. I love the contrast of that yellow and that mica vein and the beautiful white and the poppy seeds. Ah, it's perfect. Let's do one more cut. Okay, and gently down. Mm, that turned out so nicely. Now, are you wondering what would happen if we actually cut this soap the normal way? Let me show you. And when you cut straight down, Look what you see here, drag marks. Mmm, that mica vein just went shoop, and it's fine, but it doesn't look as perfect as we might want. So, the trick to getting rid of it, spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol, take a paper towel, and just gently wipe it away. And good as new. Now, if you're cutting your soap and it breaks apart, that's really frustrating, isn't it? It's probably because that mica layer was just a little too thick to allow the layers to adhere together. All is not lost, however. You can always chop this soap up and put it into another batch of soap if that happened to you. Ah, oh, I love the way this smells. It smells so bright and effervescent. Now this soap is fresh. Remember, it does need to sit for four to six weeks before you can give it away, use it, sell it, anything. So let it sit in a well-ventilated area for four to six weeks before using. Thanks so much for joining me today on Soap Queen TV. Until next time, happy soaping.